Hi there, I'm David Dye and I'll be taking you through the last few modules of this course. In this module, we'll start to use the calculus we've done and put it together with vectors in order to start solving equations. In this first video, we'll look at a nice simple case where we just need to find the gradient, uh, the derivative, in order to solve an equation using what's called the Newton-Raphison method. Now, say we've got that distribution of heights again uh, with a, a, a mean, an average, a mu and a width, sigma, and we want to fit an equation to that distribution that, um, so we don't have to, after we fitted it, bother about carrying around all the data points. We just have a model with two parameters, a mean and a width. And we could do everything using just the model. And that would be loads faster and simpler and would let us make predictions and so on. So it would be much, much nicer. But how do we find the right parameters for the model? How do we find the best mu and sigma we can? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to find some expression for how well the model fits the data and then look at how that goodness of fit varies as the fitting parameters, mu and sigma, vary. So we're trying to solve an equation where the fitting parameters are the variables in the equation. But in order to get there, in the next module actually, we're first going to need to do a bit more calculus. So first, let's look at the equation of a line. Say here, y equals x cubed minus 2x plus 2. If we differentiate this equation, uh, we get the quadratic 3x squared minus 2, and that quadratic will have two solutions, and therefore two turning points will exist, one a maximum, one a minima, just as we see here. Now, say that I don't know what the equation looks like, I'm blind, and I haven't got enough computer resources to graph out the values at every point. Or more likely, in reality, say the function exists in so many dimensions that I can't visualise it at all. But say I only need to find the solution to the equation where y equals 0. So where x cubed minus 2x plus 2 is equal to 0. We can see that there's actually only one solution here on this graph, but there could be more depending on the exact form of the equation I was trying to solve. Now, say that I have an idea that I want to hunt for a solution somewhere near some initial guess, uh, the red dot here. For instance, the constant's pretty small and positive, so I might guess that for, I need a slightly negative value of x, say minus 2 might be somewhere near a solution. Now, if I can evaluate the value of the function at my guess of x equals minus 2, I find that the function has a value of minus 2. And if I ask what the gradient is at that value of x equals minus 2, I find that the gradient is positive and it's 10. Now, I can extrapolate the gradient to the intercept with the y-axis, which is, uh, would be my first guess of the solution of the equation. That's why I'm trying to solve where it finds that intercept with the y-axis. So I can use that value of x at the intercept as a new estimate for what the solution to the equation is. Effectively, I'm guessing that the function is a straight line, and then I'm using the gradient to extrapolate to find the solution. It isn't really a straight line, of course, but the first order approximation would be that it's a straight line, and we'll use that to update our guess and then go again and evaluate. So I can write down an equation for my new guess, x, i plus 1, based on my previous guess at attempt xi, as being my original guess minus the value of the function divided by its gradient. So let's see how it plays out. We can make a table starting with our initial guess at i equals 0, and then we can find the gradient and the intercept. And then use that to generate a new guess. In this case, minus 2 minus minus 2 divided by 10 gives us minus 2 plus 0.2, which is minus 1.8. Then we can evaluate the result for that guess and find that it's just a little less than 0, minus 0.23, and the gradient is 7.7. .7. So we've gone from being out by 2 on y to being out by just 0.23. So in some sense, we've got like 10 times better in our estimate, just in our first go. If we carry on, then we get the next guess for x2 is minus 1.77, and that's just 0.005 away from the axis. It's really close. Then if we have another go, after just three iterations, we get an answer of x equals minus 1.769, which is just 2.3 times 10 to the minus 6 from the axis. So in just three iterations, we've pretty much solved the problem, which is pretty cool. This method is called the Newton-Raphison method, and it's really pretty neat. To solve an equation, all we need to be able to do is evaluate it and differentiate it. We don't need to graph and visualise it everywhere, calculating it lots and lots of times. We don't need to be able to solve it algebraically either. 
which if we have lots of dimensions to a data set, say, and a big multi multi variable function we're trying to fit to that data, it's going to be much too expensive to try and solve it analytically, or even plot it out for all the possible values of the variables. This sort of method where we try a solution and evaluate it, and then generate a new guess, and then evaluate that, and again and again and again, is called iteration. And it's a very fundamental computational approach. Now, there are some things that can go wrong sometimes with this method. So let's briefly look at those. Say I started off with a guess of x equals 0, which evaluates to y equals 2. When I find the gradient for that and extrapolate it, that takes me away from the solution to the other side of the turning point and gives me a new guess that x equals 1. When I evaluate that, then I get a value uh, for y at x equals 1 of 1. When I find the gradient and extrapolate back, then my new estimate lands me back at x equals 0, which is where I've begun. So I have a problem. I seem to have magically landed in a closed loop where my estimates just cycle back between x equals 0 and x equals 1. And I never get close. I never even go anywhere near to the solution at x equals minus 1.769. There's another problem which is that if I'm close to a turning point, this bottom here, to a minima or a maxima, then because my gradient will be very small, when I divide by the gradient in the Newton-Raphson equation here, my next estimate will take me zapping off to some crazy value. Um, and therefore it won't converge easily, it'll dive off somewhere. Those are the problems. So, that's the Newton-Raphson method. We iterate to a solution to an equation by each time making a new estimate for the solution, using the gradient to extrapolate towards the solution, then going again and again and again. And most of the time, this works really well as a means to step towards the solution. So, what we've done in this video is look at a method for using just the gradient to step our way towards solving a problem. This method is called the Newton-Raphson method, and it's a really powerful way to solve an equation, just by evaluating it and its gradient a few times. It's as if you're standing on a hill in the fog and you can know your height, and you can know locally what's going on around you. You can know how steep the hill is, but you can't see the whole landscape around you. You don't know what it looks like. You don't know how to get down the mountain, if you like, down to a nice, safe place that doesn't have cliffs. So what you do is you guess, based on how steep the hill is locally around you, which way to go. But you want to go down to sea level, so you go down the hill. Then you take that step, blindfolded, and when you get there, you ask again what height you're at and how steep it is, and then you keep making more steps down the hill until either something goes wrong and you need to go back down the other way, or you get home to where you want it, want it to be. The point is, you don't need to know what the landscape looks like, the function. You just need an altimeter, the value of the function, and to be able to feel with your toe what the gradient is like locally around you. What we'll do in the next video is look at how to apply this where we've got multiple variables not just x. And that will involve finding the gradient vector, how to go down a hill on a contour plot.